So the term FU money is something that you've all heard, right? But what it means to me is different than what it means to you. And depending on what your current situation is, maybe your age, maybe your current outstanding debts or obligations, it can mean different things to different people. But what most people think about is having like so much money, you can go into your boss and pee on his desk and be like, yo, I'm done. I'm out because I got FU money. That's what a lot of people think it actually means. For me, it meant something very different. $5,000, that was my number. My entire life, from the age of like zero, I always was thinking about money. Every single day, there was so much brain power that was being used thinking about how I was gonna pay my bills, how I was gonna pay rent, how I was gonna put gas in my car, right? And when so much of your brain power is occupied with this constant worry about money, it prevents you from doing other things or thinking about other things or being more creative or taking risks. When I had $5,000 in the bank, one day something incredible happened. I remember it like it was yesterday. At the end of the day, I was like, wait a second, I didn't think about money today. It was amazing. The next day, guess what? Same thing happened. It was at this point in which every single aspect of my life and my entrepreneurial endeavors and dreams got better. And the reason is because I wasn't using so much of my brain power and bandwidth in order to worry about how I was paying my bills and how I was going to make or hustle enough money to just put gas in my car. And something amazing happened. At this point in my life, everything got better. Everything got brighter because all the energy that you use worrying about money and trying to figure out how you're gonna pay your bills, it goes away. And when it goes away, and when it went away for me, it allowed me to think more creatively. It allowed me to think about businesses and be more risk-taking. It allowed me to truly be free. The pressure and the power that poor has on somebody is unbelievable, it's stifling. But once you take that off the table, it's amazing what actually happens. And so I wanna challenge you. What is your number? Now, what your number looks like in terms of like, if I had $20 million, that's what I would consider. Come on, be more realistic, because that's probably not your number. It's enough money that you don't have to worry or think about money. If you lost your job for a month, or two months, or three months, maybe it's a year, what is that number? Identifying and figuring out what that number is and then working towards that goal is critical for you to basically stop using all the brain power and bandwidth that is currently being used worrying about money. Once you take that off the table, power, it's powerful when you don't think about money. And that's one of the things, if it means you need to set a better budget, if it means you need to start living below your means, you need to do whatever you need to do in order to obtain it and hit that number. Because when you do, boom, brain power explosion is gonna happen and it's gonna mean that you're going to be able to do more incredible things, you're gonna be able to think more creatively, more outside the box, and you're not gonna be worried and stressed out all the time about money, it's what happened to me. Now, as you hit your number, it's gonna adjust, it's gonna go up. I remember when I first had $100,000 in the bank, it was like mind blowing. If you would've asked me, I'd have been like, I'm the richest dude in the world. That's what it felt like to me. Now, if I had $100,000 in the bank, I'd be a little stressed out because that's not enough. It's not my number. As I started to make more, of course, what happens? It's natural. Your expenses start to rise. And this is something that is scary, but it's also something you need to understand that when it starts to happen, you got to push it down, right? Delayed gratification. Do you really need what you are getting or do you just want it, right? Identifying the difference between a need and a want is also something that you need to figure out how to do. Because a lot of times we think we need something when the truth is we could do without. We don't need it, we want it. Now, there's nothing wrong with treating yourself or going out and buying things if you want it, right? And you can afford it and you're not buying it on credit, but it's going to slow down your growth towards that FU number. But it's critical, like I said, for you to figure it out. What is it? Down below, guys, I wanna know, realistically, Please comment, what is your personal number? Mine now, you wanna know what it is? $5 million. $5 million, I did the math. I'm like, all right, I make zero interest. I don't invest the money. If I had $5 million in cash or assets or assets I could sell for cash, that would be enough money for me at this age to live literally to 110 years old. Now, something about me though, I don't have super crazy, ridiculous expenses, right? If I basically had $150,000 a year, I didn't have these businesses, if everything went away, I could live crazy comfortably, right? My wife, she could continue to not work. Like, we would be super fine because one thing for me is that I don't believe in debt. Now, I know that that's something that 
a lot of people would be like, what are you talking about? And anybody who invests in real estate or anything like that is like, wait a second, that's stupid, right? You should have debt. Everybody should have debt. There's good debt and bad debt. For me, because I had and filed bankruptcy and the, the burden and the stress about money and debt was so powerful, the pressure of having a lot of debt is unbelievable. And for me, when I filed bankruptcy, it was like a clean start. I was like, oh my God, right? I had $500,000 that I bankrupted when I bankrupted. And at the time, I think they did like a means test and I was making, because of the golf course I was working at, it was like $130 a week. I, like I literally was as broke as you get. And I had a lot of debt. And I knew that if I have the opportunity to get rid of this and I can start fresh, I'm never going to do anything I can't afford. And so for me, I am very debt adverse, all right? That goes for everything I own, right? Real estate, I, I know this is crazy, but I pay cash for things. If I can't afford it, I don't do it. But this doesn't mean that that's the right answer for you. And that's something that I also wanna talk a lot about on this channel. The Alpha M Empire is not just about business, it's also about investing. And one of my things that I love investing in is real estate. And so if you guys wanna know more about real estate or see my real estate portfolio, I'll take you on a little tour and go over it. Um, down below say, yo, Alpha, tell us a little bit more about real estate. Like to know your opinion, because there's a lot of people that are talking and selling you e-products and courses on how to basically make a ton of money on real estate because a lot of money can be made in real estate, but there are different ways to go about doing that. But today, this video isn't about that. It's about you identifying what your number is. What is that FU number for you personally? Figuring it out and getting it because once you do, everything changes. For me, like I said, now $5 million, but guess what? I've hit it. I got it. But has it changed my number? No, it's still the same, right? Now I'm just basically trying to add value and help other people do what I've done, which is build their personal empire. You know, I am happy, I am fulfilled, I am successful, but I'm still hungry. And I think that's the other thing. You know, I'm not necessarily, I don't consider myself a greedy person, but one of the ways that you measure success is growth in top line numbers, not to mention personal like wealth. And, um, and so that is something that I am always trying to improve on because I personally also feel that if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. And this is something that I have worked so hard to get to where I am. I am willing to fight every single day, but I say the same thing every day when I get up. Every single day I say the same thing. Don't F it up today because I feel like every single one of us is one or two bad decisions from being broke or in jail. And for me, I have just, I've, I've bled, I've worked, I've strived, I've, I've given every ounce of my being in order to figure this out and I finally have figured some things out and so I don't want it to go away. And so I'm ultra aware of what it looks like on the other side because of where I came from in terms of growing up poor, having businesses fail. And so it's not something that I'm interested in doing again. It doesn't mean I won't take risks, but my risks these days are more calculated. Gentlemen, that's where I'm gonna wrap things up. What is your number down below? Let me know.